Hey everyone, this is one of two tutorials walking you through the process of syncing your audio and video. This one's going to be in Avid. If you are cutting in Premiere and want to watch that one, there's a separate tutorial that walks through the same process in Premiere. So I have here footage from one of our class shoots and just want to show you the process of going about syncing this. I did want to note one thing just on a technical level before that just to kind of show you part of why we recommend the particular workflow we do. What I have here in Avid is the original footage shot on the FS7. You can see it was shot at full 4K, not UHD, but 4096 by 2160. And I'm working on my laptop right now, and what I'd like you to see is it can read this footage, but it's not gonna be able to keep up with it. There's just too much data for it to play. So if I hit play here, going to start playing okay and then you'll see it starts to get jumpy when it can't kind of keep up with the data rate anymore so that's going to be really hard if I'm trying to edit with that and this is one of the reasons that we would transcode or use proxies obviously the other is to get some smaller files that we can work with day to day instead of keeping all our master footage but but that's not really going to be a tenable situation for editing a whole project so that's why we would transcode in Avid or use proxies in Premiere to make this run more smoothly. If you have a high powered computer that could handle this natively, that might work okay from that aspect. Working on just my laptop, it's not gonna put up with that. I'll also show you even in the transcodes or proxies, it does make a difference what resolution and codecs and formats you set it to. So here is a shot that has been transcoded into the DNxHR SQ version of that codec. And you're gonna see the same thing happen. When I hit play here, it's gonna start out kind of playing okay, and then you can see it start to slow down and glitch and not kind of keep up in time. So what I'm actually gonna work with is the LB version of that codec, which is low bandwidth. And you know, if you look at this, I'll even blow it up full screen. You can see this looks perfectly fine. I have plenty of resolution plenty of detail to figure out what I need to do. It's just a much smaller file and so my computer can keep up and then there's, there's no glitching or freezing or jerkiness to it. It's playing everything perfectly smoothly. Obviously the color space doesn't look great and that's because of it's in log mode. This is still the original log footage. I haven't done any coloring with it yet. So just wanted to note that. Okay, so let's talk about how the actual thinking process works. And the concept is very straightforward. The main thing here is just making sure you're doing it the right way within the software so things work correctly for you through the rest of your post workflow. So the idea is on set, we had a slate someone was holding up right here with the clapper on top. And all we're gonna do is just match the visual moment when the clapper hits, when this top part comes down and hits the board with the sound moment where you hear that clap of the two hitting. And we're going to use that as our sync point and then just play them smoothly forward together from there. So that's the idea of what we're trying to do. Here's my first shot. Let's blow it up and it says it is shot one, take one. So what I'm going to do is find the moment where that hits. And sometimes this is a little subjective. So here it clearly hasn't hit. By this point, it clearly has all the way hit you could gauge whether it's this frame or this frame is the one where it actually hits. Because remember, each of these frames isn't instantaneous. It takes some period of time. And so sometimes the slate might have actually hit between two frames or during one frame or whatever. So use your judgment. I'm going to say this one looks good to me. And in Avid, I'm just going to mark an endpoint. So I'll hit the letter I and mark an endpoint there. And if I want to change the name on this, to be clear, I could. So I'll say shot one, take one, or whatever your nomenclature may be. I'll leave this so I know what the codec was on this just to distinguish it from these. Okay, and then I want to find the audio from that. And in this case, we had some issues with the naming. So you can see there's two shots that are named one slash oh one. So I'm going to have to find which is the right one. I believe it is this one. And in Avid, I'm going to pop over here and look and see my waveform. Let's see what the other one looked like. And this looks like sort of a nothing. And audio was running for a while. There was some discussion. And this is probably going to be the slate right here, this peak. Parker. Yep, so that was it. Let's rewind and just make sure that this is, in fact, shot one, take one, that the labeling of the file is correct. So read the slate. Roll one, scene one, take one. 
Once you pick that up. Okay, so that's what we wanted. So I'm going to do the same thing. Going to find the moment of this hit and you can sync audio and video with anything that matches. So any moment where there's something where a specific visual thing happens on screen and you know the sound that goes with that, you can always use that to sync. If you forget a clapper, a lot of people will clap in front of the camera or anything else where you can tell what moment in the image matches what moment in the sound. One of the nice things about actually using a slate with a clapboard though is it just makes this very distinctive sound where you can look at the waveform and immediately know exactly where it's going to be. So I can tell it's going to be this. This is just a characteristic sound of it. Again, remembering this covers the length of a frame. So I'm going to grab this frame where the clapper happened kind of during the middle of that 24th of a second. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to mark an endpoint. So now what I've told Avid is for this sound recording, this moment I've marked an endpoint. For this video recording, I've marked an endpoint. And I'm going to take those two, select them both, go into the clip menu and say auto sync. And it's going to ask me, how do I want to sync these? And I'm going to say, I want to sync them using their endpoints. And I'm just telling Avid, take the two endpoints of these, match up those moments, and then mush these clips together. So I'll hit OK. Now I have this new shot that shows up. And it should now have everything in sync. Let's check it. I'll rewind here. See the clapper. Marker. That looked good. You can fast forward to later and see if there's something else that makes some sound that looks. Let's see, let me put the bag down here. It's gone. Okay, that looks like everything worked out okay. So. I've got this shot now, and the name Avid's going to give it by default is whatever the name of the master video clip was. In this case, it was S1T1LB, so it's going to say S1T1LB.sync. So this is my synced clip. And then the last thing I would personally do is I'm going to make a new bin for synced footage. And as I sync some clips, I'm just going to move those move this in here and keep all my synced clips in there. Let's do one more. Go to, I think this was my next shot. Let's look, that looks like scene one, take two. Okay. And judgment call, I would say right here. Mark that as an endpoint. Let's go to my audio. I want scene one, take two. And two things that look like they could be a clapper here. One is this, one is this back here. I'm guessing it's probably this first part. Let's check. Row one, scene one, take two. Out of curiosity, let's see what this other thing was that looked like. That was another sort of hard, quick sound. So there's this, and again, I can sort of judge it's either right at the end of this frame or right at the start of this frame. I'm going to try this one. And this one is scene one, take two. Okay, use your own nomenclature, whatever makes sense to you. Grab all those, clip, auto sync by endpoints. Okay. And I'll note that in Avid, obviously, you can customize your keyboard shortcuts. So when you're going to do syncing, I would recommend just mapping a keyboard button to this auto sync option. And then you can start doing this very quickly, just sort of punching through them. And once you do the first couple and sort of see what the process is like, you can start doing them very quickly. There are ways to automatically sync footage that every editor has some of these built in. The simplest way is if you actually had time code jammed between your camera and your sound, so they're actually running the same time code. You can just tell the editor to sync everything by time code. We don't generally have that capability on student shoots, but there are a whole bunch of different ways. I think this is just the most straightforward because you see exactly what you're doing. I'm finding this point matching where the video starts and where the audio starts. Move this in here, and then I start getting together my clips to edit. And so once I have these synced clips, you know, let's check this one and make sure it looks good. One, take two. Beautiful. 
Let's see if this end part here stays safe. It's gone. Great. So that's how we do our syncing in Avid. And then once we have these clips, I'm going to ignore all this other stuff I created and kind of have those just in some closed bins. And I'm going to use all these synced clips to actually do the editing with. So this is what I want to edit with. And if I've done it through this process correctly, when I'm ready to go out of Avid into color grade or send it into Pro Tools to do some audio, I can use this sequence and it still has all the information about the original clips these came from and can reconnect with all of those seamlessly. So that's the syncing process.